Hello and welcome to a discussion on the histology of the integumentary system. So to begin with, the main functions of skin will include um, acting as a barrier. It also has a function in homeostasis. It has a function in excretion, the sweat. It has an immunologic function. It also has an endocrine function uh, in relation to vitamin D. Right, And um, the first statement there reads, Skin histology is the most boring as a pre-med, but the most interesting in pathology. Then um, histology-wise, the skin is going to be composed of two layers. There's going to be the epidermis, then there's going to be the dermis. The epidermis, remember, it's going to have a stratum basale, then it's going to have a stratum spinosum, then a stratum granulosum, then a stratum lucidum, depending on whether you're thick skin, then the stratum cornea most superficially, right? The stratum basale is the one that is stem cells. It is basophilic cuboid or collaminar cells. And those keratinocytes that you find in the stratum basale, they have intermediate filaments called keratins. Together with the stratum spinosum, um, the basal part of it, the stratum basale and that basal part of the stratum spinosum that consists of stem cells can be referred to as the stratum geminativum. Right? Then the stratum spinosum is the thickest. It is composed of polyhedral cells. Right? And the cells that you find within the stratum spinosum, the keratinocytes within the stratum spinosum, they are larger than the keratinocytes that are found within the stratum basale. Right? And the keratin filaments within the stratum spinosum, they assemble to form microscopically visible tonal fibrils. Right. And if you look at um, those keratinocytes within the stratum spinosum, they are characterized by seroplasmic processes, also known as spines, uh, from where the name is derived, stratum spinosum. Those cells can also be referred to as the precoce cells. Right. Then there's this place, the stratum granulosum, which is the most superficial um, layer in reference to the non-keratinized uh, portions of the epidermis. It is three to five cell um, thick, and it is composed of non-membrane bound granules called keratohyaline granules, hence the name stratum granulosum. It is highly basophilic, right? Uh, under the light microscope. Right. Those granules contain proteins that are rich in cysteine and um, histidine, which are precursors of um, a protein known as filaggrin. Filaggrin is the one that um, is responsible for the aggregation of the keratin filaments um, within that layer, right? Uh, which you are then going to see. Um, as the keratinization in the hornified layer, the stratum corneum. So you, you so you find um, filaggrin being made from histidine and um, cysteine rich proteins, right? Then the stratum lucidum, like I said, is present in thick skin, the skin that you find on the sole of the foot and the palm of the hand. This thick skin has a thicker epidermis as compared to thin skin and um, like I, if you look at the left side of the board, thickness of the epidermis ascribes the term thick and thin skin, not overall skin thickness. Right. The stratum lucidum is somehow uh, considered a subdivision of the stratum uh, corneum by others. Right. Then if you look at the stratum corneum, it is a layer of 15 to 20 flattened cells which are continuously shed off uh, and it is highly keratinized um, the stratum corneum right then it also forms a barrier there's going to be a bit of um, a water barrier between uh, the stratum corneum and um, the external surface which is the reason why the skin comes in contact with water the water does not get into the body then, so we said um, skin has two layers, epidermis and dermis. 
Epidermis is embryologically derived from surface ectoderm. The dermis comes from mesoderm, paraxial mesoderm, lateral plate mesoderm. But the dermis of the head and the neck, to include the face, it comes from neural crest cells. The cells that we find within the epidermis, mainly they're the keratinocytes, which make up about 80% of the cells. Then we have what are known as the melanocytes, which come from neural crest cells. We have the tactile cells, the macro cells. Then we have the lung and cells, which are antigen presenting cells. We are simply macrophages. Right? So the predominant cell is the keratinocyte. Right? Then the melanocytes make up about 5% of the cells of the epidermis. Then the macro cells make up about 6 to 10%. Then the lung and cell make up about 2 to 5% of the cells that you find within the epidermis. Right. Then, just like any other epithelia, this epidermis is going to be avascular and it rests on a basal lamina. And remember, you're going to have uh, hemidesmosomes. Right. So if you have a condition called bullous pemphigoid, which affects the hemidesmosomes, the affected epidermal cells detach from the basal lamina, unlike in pemphigus vulgaris, which is um, going to affect desmoglin, which is found in desmosomes. That results in uh, intercellular spaces now forming within the epidermis. Right. Then if you look at the deeper layer of skin, which is the dermis, the dermis is composed of a papillary layer and a reticular layer. Right. The papillary layer is the most superficial layer, and it consists of type 3 and type 1 collagen. You find fibroblasts, mast cells, macrophages, and it's basically loose connective tissue. So it's more cellular as compared to the underlying reticular layer, which is mostly type 1 collagen. There's dense irregular connective tissue. This is the reason why you can slide skin in all directions, and it contains the nerves and the blood vessels. Right. And it's less cellular as compared to the overlying papillary layer. Right. Then you also find elastic fibers uh, in both. Right. Then the collagen and the elastic fibers in these um, in these layers will actually be uh, regularly arranged as the lung as lines in which you should actually make skin incisions parallel to those lung and lines for you to have least, least scarring um, from surgical incisions. Right. Then below all this, you find the hypodermis, which is not a layer of skin per se, but this is basically the subcutaneous tissue, which in your gross anatomy you call superficial fascia. So it will be loose connective tissue, um, typified mostly by adipocytes, and it binds the skin to some of the underlying structures. Right. Then, if you look at the melanocytes, the melanocytes, remember we say they, they come from neural crystals, and they're the ones that are actually going to be producing melanin. However, the melanin will be stored in the keratinocytes. Right. So these are actually going to be neural crest derived cells. Remember the neural crest cells from embryology, which you can also consider as a fourth germ layer, right? So for you to be able to produce melanin, you remember you need to have oxidation of tyrosine and you make DOPA by tyrosine S, right? Then you need to then convert the DOPA to, to melanin, right? From your biochemistry, right? Then you also need melanin, melanocyte stimulating hormone, right, which is produced by the anterior lobe of the pituitary gland uh, for you to be able to have melanin uh, production. Right. Then you'd also remember the macro cell, which I mentioned earlier on the tactile cells, right, those are dendritic cells located in the stratum basale. And um, they are antigen presenting cells, like we said earlier on and they're implicated in allergic reactions involved in the skin as well, right? And they can even have cancers known as macro cell carcinomas. Right? Then remember skin is a sensitive structure. It is highly innervated. There's afferent nerve fibers for uh, sensory innervation, right? Which is mostly going to be part of the somatic uh, nervous system.
right? Then you have other nerve endings uh, that are encapsulated, uh, associated with the skin. You look at things like the Pacinian corpuscle, the Masonous corpuscle, you look at the Raffini corpuscles, things that you're going to describe with your neurophysiology, right? The Pacinian corpuscles are large ovoid masses uh, that are found in the deep dermis as well as the hypodermis. Then you also expect one known as the Masonous corpuscles, which are touch receptors for light touch. The Mason and the Pacinian are fast adapting, as you find in physiology. Then you also expect that affinity corpuscles, which are also mechanoreceptors, right? And there are known as epidermal appendages, which originate embryologically from the epidermal epithelium. Then they invaginate into the dermis. Those include the hair follicles. You look at the sebaceous glands. Uh, you look at the sweat glands, which can be acrine or um, apocrine. And if you remember the secretion for the sebaceous glands, it's a holocrine secretion, and they burst and secrete via short ducts into the hair follicle, right? Then the hair follicles, remember, they're going to be having hairs, and the hair follicle will have basically four parts, an infant dibulum, the east mass, then a follicular bulge. Then you also expect um, an inferior segment, right? That's Those are the parts that you find in, in a hair follicle. Right. Then if you look at the matrix, it, it, it divides into a keratin uh, producing uh, region uh, for the head and the internal A, the internal um, root sheath. Right? The internal root sheath, we have three layers, uh, the handless layer, the axless layer, then an internal root sheath cuticle. Not so important to remember. Right? Then if you look at the hair itself, it's going to have a medulla, then it's going to have a cortex, which is about 80% of the uh, composition of the hair, right, which is the largest layer. Then you also expect the cuticle of the hair shaft. right? Then the sebaceous glands, remember those are also going to be developing as um, outgrowths of the external root sheath, not the internal root sheath. They develop as outgrowths of the external root sheath. Right, and they remain associated with a hair follicle. Right, so there's something called a pilosebaceous unit, which is the sebaceous gland, its secretion, and the hair follicle it's secreting into. Right, and the sweat glands, remember, the merocrine or the acrine, they secrete normally via ducts, and the apocrine, they, they're the sweat glands that you find in the axilla and the perineum, they develop with puberty. And for them to be able to secrete, they lose or pinch off their apical parts. Right? Those are going to be the apocrine sweat glands. And the acrine sweat glands mainly contain three types of cells. There's the clear cells, which have abundant glycogen. Then there's the dark cells, which have abundant rough endoplasmic reticulum. Then there's the myoepithelial cells, which are contractile. Right? Then the apocrine sweat glands, still the same story, just that you also have myoepithelial cells, then they um, they also have ducts, but in terms of secretion, they have their apical part being pinched off, right? Then you talk about nails as well. I uh, remember nails, embryologically, they develop on the palm aspect of the hand, as well as the plant aspect of the foot, then they migrate uh, to the back. Right. Then you talk about nail plates and nail beds uh, from your gross anatomy. Right. Then moving on to the slides uh, to show skin. So this is the epidermis. So this is your epidermis. This is where you have dermis. These here, they are ducts of salivary glands, or sweat glands rather. These are, these are ducts of sweat glands. Um, these are the sweat glands. Oh, these, they are sweat glands, they are sweat glands, sweat glands. These here are blood vessels. Right? And these are the ducts of your sweat glands. Right? Then if you look at this part here, that's adipose tissue. Right. 
If you come to this, this is epidemis, this upper part here, that's epidemis. This here is demis. Right? This here is a hair follicle. That's a hair follicle right there. Right. Then, if you come to this region here, this is a sebaceous gland. Right. That's a sebaceous gland. That's another sebaceous gland here. Uh, then in this region, that's a blood vessel. That's another hair follicle. Right. Then these are the layers of um, the epidemis. This is the stratum corneum where you find the keratin filaments. This is the thickest stratum spinosum. This one. Then the darkly highly granular layer, this one, that's the granulosum. Right. Then this becomes the stratum basale. Right. Then this here will be our dermis. Right. This is the dermis. These are blood vessels now. The dermis will be the one that is vascular. Right. Then the next slide will clearly show the dermis. So if you look at this one, those are still keratin filaments right there. Those are keratin filaments. Uh, that's the epidermis. Right? And those are your epidermal ridges, your ridges, the red ridges. Then those are the dermal papillae. Right? Then this one. This one is showing the highly cellular papillary layer. And this one here is showing the reticular layer. This one, this is the reticular layer right there. So these are elastic fibers, the ones that I'm saying that will be also in this reticular layer and some will also be found in the papillary layer. Right? Then this is epidermis, which is our vascular, right? The highly, uh, that's the strut, Tum basale right there. And the, those are going to be the keratin filaments high up there. Then there's a gland. Right? There's an apocrine squid gland. Right? Those, those are apocrine squid glands. Uh, that's also another apocrine squid gland at higher magnification now. Then um what else can we show here? Then this one, these are acrine squid plants. Same applies with this one that have magnification now. Right. Then this is a myepithelial uh, cell, this one, with that nucleus that is spindle shaped there. This is a duct. That's a duct right there. And what else can you see here? That's an artery. This is. This is your um, your gland, the acrine gland. If you look at this um, this side here, yeah. this is a duct right? that is draining your metacrine uh, squid gland. Then this here is um, part of the secretory components of the Metocrine squid gland. That's another, um, that's another duct. Right. Then associated with um, 
this one secretory component you see this circumferential cells here they're called circumferential um circumferential bands right these ones then um these slides here simply show um the sensory organs that i was trying to describe this here is a pacinian corpuscle right and if you look at the skin intact here these here are the pacinian corpuscles this region those are the pacinian corpuscles this is the pacinian corpuscle at, at, at high magnification now right then this is uh these are masoner's corpuscles. This is now a masoner's corpuscle at higher magnification. Right. That's a masoner's corpuscle. Right. Then that's the fibrous capsule that surrounds your masoner's corpuscle in that region. Then all that that is above that is epidermis, of course. Right. That's just about it. Thank you for watching.